Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about boilerplate code and complexity. So let's get into it. Now, first and foremost, we need to tell you just a few things, because otherwise this won't make any sense to you whatsoever. So right now I am working on a new major feature for the product at my company and basically a discussion arose on how to approach a problem that as per usual is the sort of thing that we estimate or rather the project product department our PO is estimating to be a fairly small amount of work and some whiz kid programmer has told her that yeah the scope of this is fairly small and then somebody comes in and asks a few very select very good questions and all of a sudden a small thing turns into a massive massive thing that we need to talk about for seven days in order to even get started on that's where we are right now and i am the poor sucker who unfortunately put himself in the position of picking a what i call a choke point or bottleneck story and for the juniors out there, a bottleneck story, this is my own term, you may not have heard it before, is a story that needs to be finished before you can work on 10 other stories in order to deliver the thing that you're working on. That means that you as the single developer who picked that story, you are practically responsible for the delivery of the entire project. Or rather, you are the dam that is holding all the other one all other programmers back usually this is the sort of story that has to do with models so that's a good tip for you if you're a programmer if you want to avoid being the center of attention for absolutely every bottle uh, everybody don't pick the story where you have to declare a new data model just don't but on to the actual topic at hand so the way that things work today in the code base is that there whenever and this is fairly fairly true for those of you who have been doing this for a while you probably recognize that whenever you're defining a new model or a new way as in object oriented pro programming a service of some sort or anything like that this is fairly boilerplate type of stuff you declare your data model you put your fields there you create a service that manages all of the different state transitions and actions and all of that good stuff it's nothing fancy whatsoever it's fairly boilerplate and somebody came along and discussed the possibility of making a change to the system basically we use an event-based system which is pretty cool and virtually the idea that came to light sparked a bit of a conversation between whether or not we should abstract away a lot of the boilerplate code that we have in favor of having a few more generic solutions or a few more generic interfaces that are you know not repeated as much and we went back and forth and i'll tell you what we finally decided on and why we did that and why i think it's an important lesson so the are the base argument in the group became all right we could go with this more sophisticated model this this, this more com complex structure and gain the advantage of less boilerplate and we do that f knowing full well that we are going to introduce a fair bit of complexity and that discussion kind of went this way I said, I made the, or rather I made the argument to my colleague who was in favor of the more complex solution. I said, why would you trade boilerplate for less, for more complexity? And he said, well, because boilerplate takes like it's, there's a lot of code that has to be written in order to keep this event so because event sourcing if you do don't work in an event source system you may not know this but every time you define a new view with new events and all that stuff there's a lot of like there is more code that needs to be generated in general there's a lot of benefits to event sourcing but 
code, bre uh, uh, co the, the amount of code you have to write is usually a little bit more. That's all I'm going to say on that topic. But the argument my colleague made was basically that, yeah, for this specific case, maybe we don't want to use event sourcing. Maybe we simply want to make an exception to this and just go with a standard type of, or rather another approach that will let us write less code. And as I said, my argument was, all right, so you trade consistency and all that stuff for more, and, and get you get more complexity basically, so that you can write less code. And I asked, what is the value? And he just looked at me and said, well, because I don't have to write all this boilerplate code. And I said, but yeah, yeah, I get that. But what's the problem? Well, it's boilerplate. It's like, well, I don't, like, we don't want to write the boilerplate. Okay, sure. Yeah, I, it makes sense. You don't want to write the boilerplate code. I get that. But what, what's, the, what's the harm with the boilerplate? And he's like, oh, there's no harm. I just don't want to write it. Okay, I get you. I get that. I get that. But what you're suggesting is that a, a system of working, literally, like we have the exact same approach to solving this problem all across the board. And for this one single case here, without any good reason whatsoever, apart from that you don't want to have to write the same thing again as you've done a hundred times before, because in this scenario your gut is telling you that it's it's more boilerplate than it's, the, than it's worth, you want to introduce that and possibly more complexity in, or in favor of not having to write as many lines of code. Now, I might be biased here, but I argue that the boilerplate is not a problem. Boilerplate may be boring, but it's not dangerous. Complexity is dangerous. That's at least what I argue. And that's, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you the end of the story. And that's exactly what we decided on. At the end of the day, we decided that complexity is a danger to the project. Boilerplate is just boring. And I can live with boring if the alternative is something that puts my productivity and the project at jeopardy. Have a great day.